Greetings. On page 181 of Crisis of Conscience, Ray Franz is in the chapter Justification and Intimidation. And he's just been recounting how rather than getting humbled by the one failure after another, 1914, 1915, 1918, 1920, 21, hmm. all these dates they had set as being significant dates for God's action in the world, Everything had failed, and rather than getting humbled by this, they doubled down on their insistence that the chronology is correct, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. And C.T. Russell is the man that God is using. Mm -hmm. they, they say, the indisputable facts, therefore, show that the time of the end began in 1799, and the second presence in 1874. Mm -hmm. So they go on. Uh, this is now May 1st, 1922, Watchtower, two months later, the Watchtower continued the campaign to rout out any thought of questioning the organization's teachings using the same tactic. And they have a, a direct quote here from that May 1, 22 Watchtower under a subhead, Ambitions Fruitage. Now, who do you think is ambitious? Mm. Can you anticipate? <laughs> the ones that don't agree with us. Ever and anon, there arises someone who has been following the Lord for a time at least, who possesses a measure of beauty of mind and character, and possibly a person, one who takes himself too seriously. He succeeds in convincing himself that the Lord has appointed him to look after things divine and to lead God's people out of the wilderness. As he goes on in this way, he becomes convinced in his own mind that the Lord made a mistake in selecting Brother Russell as that servant. And this doubt leads to the conclusion later on that Brother Russell was not that servant at all. He begins to doubt that Brother Russell wrote, that is what Brother Russell wrote, and so expresses himself. Now he disregards the Lord's word, which says, I can't believe this, the Lord's word, which says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, mm -hmm. lean not into, unto thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Thus disregarding this admonition and being led on by the subtle influence of the adversary, he convinces himself that it is his solemn duty to undo all the things that Brother Russell taught and to turn the church's vision in the right way. He prepares a manuscript and charts in support of the same, setting forth his views, submitting it to others, being advised that his thoughts are wrong, he construes this to mean a desire to prevent him from permitting his light to shine and disregards such advice. So thoroughly is he impressed that he must thus teach the people and undo that which has been taught that he begins the publication of his thoughts and to send these forth to the consecrated. His arguments seem plausible to those who make only a superficial examination and especially to those who have forgotten what they were taught. Doubt arises in the minds of some who thus read. Now the test is on. You might think this is a prophecy of what Rutherford's going to do in yeah. about three or four years. But it isn't any different now. It's, it's when you start, your starting point is that God is using us, or using Russell in this case, or using Rutherford, or using the organization. When your starting point is that, and you will not question that, you aren't willing to listen to anybody who discovers yeah. anything. Yeah, this is where they're at 100 years later. Yeah. Nothing's changed. Yeah. Okay, so now we're back to Ray. Ray says, Loyalty to the society's teachings received from Russell was equated with loyalty to God and Christ. And that's the same as today. To deny Russell's teachings was to deny Christ. This amazing claim is plainly stated in the same issue of the Watchtower. That was 1922, right? Mm -hmm. Quote, Jesus clearly indicated that during his second presence he would have amongst the church a faithful and wise servant, through whom he would give to the household of faith meat in due season. The evidence is overwhelming concerning the Lord's second presence, the time of the harvest, and that the office of that servant has been filled by Brother Russell. This is not man-worship by any means. It matters not who Charles 
T. Russell was, whether he was a doctor, a hod carrier, you said, what did you say, a brick carrier? Just a, a laborer, yeah. A laborer, okay. Or a seller of shirts. St. Peter was a fisherman. St. Paul, a, seller, a lawyer, sorry, a lawyer. But these matters are immaterial. Above all, these men were the chosen vessels of the Lord. Regardless of his earthly avocation, above all, Brother Russell was the Lord's servant. Then to repudiate him and his work is equivalent to a repudiation of the Lord upon the principle hitherto announced. Hmm. Of course, there's a fallacy built into even the comparison, isn't there? Neither Paul nor Peter claim to be the only apostle. You are yeah. claiming he's the only one selected by yeah. Russell is the only one selected for and this he, service. And even Paul said if he changed his, what, he, what the gospel was, don't listen to me. That's right. But these men, including Rutherford later and the gov present governing body, reserve the right to change their mind and you still have to follow them. Yeah. Yeah, that's something Paul rules out in Galatians chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. Ray goes on, this line of argument is precisely the same as that used half a century later in the 1980s in condemning those called apostates. Then as now, chronology was a major factor, made a test of faith as to the genuineness of one's Christianity. This same issue of the Watchtower also warned that doubting the society's date system, including 1799, 1874, 1914, and 1925 would lead eventually to a repudiation of God and our Lord Jesus Christ and the blood with which we were bought. This is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. It said in that same May 1, 1922 issue, quote, again the test is on. This time it is on chronology and following this lead it will be found that the road of doubt and opposition will carry one into doubting the second presence of the Lord, the time of the harvest the office of that servant and the one who filled it, the evidences of the end of the world, the inauguration of the kingdom, the nearness of the restoration of man, and finally to a repudiation of God and our Lord Jesus and the blood with which we were bought. It sounds so pious. Yeah. But of course, when they talk about all these things, they're talking about 1925 now. Yeah. Another test of everyone's loyalty, apparently. Test, God's testing people by error. Hmm. And then uh, Ray says, now issue after issue focused on the society's chronology, speaking de deprecatingly of any contrary evidence and exalting the accuracy of the organization's own date system. 1914 was only one feature of that date system, and the Watchtower argued insistently that all the dates and the accompanying claims about them were right. They're product of divine guidance. Hence, there was no need to doubt any of them. Yeah. Now uh, we're again back to the May 15, 1922 Watchtower under chron chronology as the subheading. We have no doubt whatever in regard to the chronology relating to the dates of 1874, 1914, 1918, and 1925. Some claims to, uh, no, some claim to have found new light in connection with the period of 70 years of desolation and Israel's captivity in Babylon and are zealously seeking to make others believe that Brother Russell was in error. The Apostle James assures us that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. We believe that promise, and daily petition for heavenly wisdom and grace to be guided aright. We also believe that the prayers of the saints ascend daily to the throne of heavenly grace for divine guidance as to what shall appear in the watchtower. And we are very appreciative of that fact. This, of course, is, is Gnostic way of doing verification, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. saying, well, we prayed about it. James says pray about it, it takes care of itself. No, not apart from the community, not apart from the consensus, which of course yeah. they've completely broken away from in principle and in, in history. Mm. Ray, Ray says now, readers were warned not to be easily swayed in favor of evidence from secular history that contradicted the society's chronology. Note the closing statement of this paragraph. Some of their best authorities are found at times to be unreliable, as for instance Josephus and Ptolemy. These men lived during the first two centuries after Christ. They had difficulty in compiling their records, for complete data was not accessible to them. No doubt they did the best they could under the limited circumstances. They are accepted as among the best that secular history can produce. From these and from others, certain dates have been generally accepted by historical writers. But to be generally accepted does not necessarily imply absolute accuracy. However, to impress the weight of their wisdom upon their readers, these conclusions are often stated in positive language and the student is inclined to accept them at their face statement without further investigation. Well, that's rich, considering you're not supposed to question anything they say. Compare that final statement with the kind of language the Watchtower thereafter uses in urging acceptance of its system of dates. Yeah, so what does this amount to, this argument? It's, it's basically just is fogging the atmosphere. So yeah. basically we should disregard what all secular authorities say. We shouldn't trust them because they're never absolute. Even people like Josephus and the early church fathers Closer can't be trusted. Event. But you can trust us. That's yeah. what it amounts to because yeah. what you're not admitting here and you still don't admit if you're talking about these dates, i.e. 586, 607. 606, by the way, which you taught back then, was the beginning of the 70 years. Not 607, 606. So you've moved that one. But you haven't admitted that, therefore, your chronology was discredited by your own logic, where everything has mm -hmm. to co has to correspond to every other date and all the parallels, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. So, by your by your own logic, you're hung here, because you're saying don't trust men, but you can trust us, and then you change six oh six to six oh seven, rather than move nineteen fourteen to nineteen fifteen, you kept fourteen, and just moved the the beginning date. Yeah. <sighs> I feel a little... <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I mean. <laughs> Compare the, that final statement with the kind of language the Watchtower thereafter uses, and now they, they get to an example of this. This is from a, a section of the same article, the, the same Watchtower, stamped with God's approval, this section is entitled. It was on this line of reckoning that the dates 1874, 1914, and 1918 were located, and the Lord has placed the stamp of his seal upon 1914 and 1918 beyond any possibility of erasure. What further evidence do we need? Using the same measuring line, beginning with the entry of the children of Israel into Canaan, and counting the full 70 cycles of 50 years each, as clearly indicated by Jehovah's sending of the Jews into Babylon for the full 70 years, it is an easy matter to locate 1925, probably the fall, for the beginning of the anti-typical jubilee. There can be no more question about 1925 than there was about 1914. The fact that all the things that some look for in 1914, that's rich. Yeah. yeah. Why did they look for these things in because 14? Because you told them it was certain and you said it in very positive terms, just like you do these things. Russell had said it in his mm -hmm. time is at hand. The fact that all the things that some look for in 1914 did not materialize does not alter the chronology one whit. Noting the date marked so prominently, it is very easy for the finite mind to conclude that all the work to be done must center about it, and thus many are inclined to anticipate more than has been really foretold. Thus it was in, 19, in rather 1844, in 1874, 
1878 as well as in 1914 and in 1918. Looking back, we can now easily see that those dates were clearly indicated in Scripture and doubtless intended by the Lord to encourage his people as they did, well as to be a means of testing, or rather as well as to be a means of testing and sifting when all that some expected did not come to pass. So even if we're wrong, we're right. Yeah. Because God is using this to test you. That's right. So believe us whether we're right or wrong. But of course they've trashed all those dates except 14 and 18 are yeah. still looked at with some That were so clear and, and the evidence was so mm -hmm. definite. Then yeah. they go on that all that some expect to see in 1925 may not transpire that year will not alter the date one whit more than the other cases. It's, it look, Looking back 102 years now, it looks like madness. But then you realize it's all happening all over We're again. We're still mad. Yeah. We'll put in a link to Dwayne McNanny, uh, who updated a lot of this information after the 1975 disappointment. Mm -hmm. He pointed out that that's not the last time they did this. Yeah. They also did something similar in, 19, in 1999 at yeah. the turn of the millennium by essentially saying that by the time this century is over, mm -hmm. we'll be out of here. Even 75, they, they did the same thing with the sifting was the comment. Mm. It was all just, you know, it was God's way of sifting out. Yeah, so if you yeah. go by this logic that even when we're wrong, we're right, because God's using that to test us, you realize nothing they say is falsifiable. Yeah. Everything everything they do can be justified from, from yeah. and that's the same logic they did use in 75. I, yeah. I recall God so, is, the reason we're in decline in numbers from yeah. 1976 to 1978 is because God is testing you. Yeah. By the 1975. So if era. he's if your numbers are increasing, God is blessing you. If they're declining, God is sifting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's just there's no way that you can ever make any kind of sensible. Uh, you can't make sense of this. But of course, First John two twenty one says, and this was a big one for us when we tried to justify the past errors. Yeah. There's no lie is of the truth. John says, no lie is of the truth. Yeah. So it's impossible for those who really have the anointing from the Holy One to make yeah. these kind of errors, and frequently, yeah, and consistently, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the link is Dwayne Magnani. Four generations have died in a false hope. Don't be the fifth. Yeah. yeah. See you next time. Mm -hmm.